Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the Science Geek. Today's objectives are to identify the components that make up a carbohydrate, to identify the types of carbohydrates, and to understand the functions of a carbohydrate. There are three types of carbohydrates. There are monosaccharides, which have one sugar unit, disaccharides, which are, consist of two sugar units, and polysaccharides, which have three or more sugar units. Carbohydrates are composed of carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and oxygen atoms at a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, which means that there are, for every one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Monosaccharides are simple sugars made up of a single sugar unit. Examples are glucose, galactose, and fructose. Glucose is the most common sugar as it is found in your blood and it is considered to be blood sugar. A little bit more about glucose. As I mentioned, glucose is the main sugar in your blood. Glucose has six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. Therefore, it follows the 1 to 2 to 1 ratio that we previously discussed. Glucose comes from food that contains carbohydrates such as starches, sugars, rices, pasta, breads, cakes, etc. The mouth, stomach, and small intestine digest the food and break it down to glucose. Glucose enters the bloodstream in the small intestine and that glucose is carried to muscles as well as to the brain to provide energy. Disaccharides are made of two simple sugars or two monosaccharides. Some examples of disaccharides are sucrose, which is glucose and fructose, which makes table sugar, maltose, which is two glucose molecules, which equals malt sugar, lactose, which is a glucose and a galactose, which makes milk sugar. If you notice, there is at least one glucose molecule in each one of these disaccharides you will always have at least one glucose molecule. Polysaccharides are made of three or more simple sugars or monosaccharides. If you take a look at the picture we have a maltose and a glucose that covalently bond to make a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides can usually consist of a thousand or more connected monosaccharides. Some examples of polysaccharides are starches, cellulose, and glycogen. Polysaccharides are also called complex carbohydrates and are often used to create structures. If you take a look at the picture, plants tend to have cellulose, which is the most abundant macromolecule on earth. If you would bite into a piece of celery, and you feel that tough stringy substance in the celery, that is cellulose. Ticks also have a complex carbohydrate structure on the outside that protects the tick. That tough protective layer is called chitin, which is a complex carbohydrate. There are a few functions of carbohydrates. First and foremost, carbohydrates provide an energy source for cells. Carbohydrates provide support for plants, which is the cellulose, and carbohydrates provide a hard body covering for insects, like the chitin in ticks. Today's objectives were to identify the components that make up a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. The second objective was to identify the types of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates consist of monosaccharides, which are single sugar units, disaccharides, which are two sugar units, and polysaccharides, which are three or more sugar units. The last objective is to understand the functions of a carbohydrate. 
the primary function is to provide energy for the cell. Plants use cellulose as a structural component and ticks and insects use chitin as a structural component. Hopefully this tutorial you found useful in identifying the important aspects of carbohydrates. Bring any questions to class and I'll see you there.